Oh, hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm Blue Nagoon. I'm a music producer, music teacher, music fan. Uh, and today I'm going to put my music fan hat on and talk about some of my favorite songs that came out this year in one of my all-time favorite genres, retrowave or synth pop with vocals. So my goal here is just if I talk about something I like, uh, maybe somebody will come across the video and discover something that they'll like too. Simple as that. Uh, these picks are in no particular order, and I hope that if you like them, you'll check out the artists. I put links below. I also made a Spotify playlist of all these songs if you want to check it out. First up is Remember It Well by Ends84 and Cabela. I'm into Retrowave primarily because of the songwriting sensibility and the sounds used more than I am for the nostalgia, but I can't deny that sometimes a song will come along and just push those nostalgia buttons in a big way, and this is one of those songs. It's like a perfect modern recreation of a certain type of late 80s, early 90s uh, ballad that I just loved back in the day. So the vocal performance in this song is amazing. It's amazing by modern standards in terms of Cabela's control and the use of her range, especially in the ad-libs. Uh, and I love that she's not afraid to sound just a little outside the typical safe zone of what singers should sound like these days. Um, it also perfectly captures that period of time vocal sound. I can't quite put my finger on what it is that she's doing, but it reminds me a lot of like Laura Branigan or Roxette or Celine Dion, like when she first started singing English songs before she flanderized herself. Production-wise, the song is epic and lush. Uh, there's some fantastic drum programming and big synths. I especially love the interplay of the bass and the drums in the chorus. It gives the song a lot of propulsion, even though it never strays from unabashedly being a ballad. Next up is Higher Ground by Lavalette from their album American Summer. Uh, this song is a super fun journey. I just love the style contrast between the verse and the chorus. The verse is this foreboding, dark 80s ballad. I really love it when the harmony in a song reinforces the mood or the theme of the song. In the verse, the chords do this little walk-up progression, and they eventually resolve to the one chord, the major chord. But because of where it happens in the progression, it never quite fully feels like a resolution. There's a little hint of a major lift there, especially if you take into account the melody, but it never quite clears the ground, and it just perfectly adds to the tension of the verse. This track has like a dozen secret weapons. There's like this electric guitar that's doing these tasteful solos throughout the song. There's these cool synth arp fills and the epic drums. Uh, but for me, it's the background vocals that really push this one over the top. Uh, they first come in on the chorus hook. They're this tight wall of sound, and I think maybe there's some vocoder or something happening in there to make them sound vaguely inhuman. But the end result is just so much extra power and tension there. And the background vocals continue to bring it for the whole song. All kinds of parts weaving in and out. There's some belty high lines accentuating certain lyrics. And it culminates in this awesome big send up at the end of the track with all these different vocal parts uh, interacting. If you like the song, definitely check out the album. The album is a mixture of instrumental, talking sample, and vocal tracks. So kind of whatever you prefer, you're probably going to find something that you like. Next up is Eyes on the Horizon, a single by Brian Sangmeister and Star Madman. This is a dance pop track, kind of funky. It's got some crisp, tight production. I really like the contrast of the super tight, dry, propulsive kind of uh, underlying music, but then you have Star Madman's reverby smooth vocals over the top of it. The chorus is super catchy and uplifting. It's got this awesome halftime bridge that comes in with these little synth arps. They're very satisfying. There's these cool synth bell fills and a really rocking synth solo. And then for me, one of the highlights at the end of the track, Star Madman does some vocal ad libs. I love vocal ad libs, and it's always fun to hear a singer kind of cut loose a little bit. Next up is the Dream Tether album by Infraviolet. I had a hard time picking one song out of this album, honestly. It's all really good. Really solid songwriting. Like, these are real songs. The two really unique elements to this band are the vocals and the guitar. Bethany Monroe, the vocalist, she uses a, a lot of her range, uh, especially the lower end of her range, more than you usually hear from female singers. Like, she dips down in tenor and baritone range. It really adds a gravitas and an emotionality to the vocals that you don't hear that often. The guitar work on this album is not typically what you hear. It's not just power chords and open chords and stuff. It's a lot of really interesting, clean, melodic work. In the intro to Grow, for example, the guitar is playing all harmonics. It's a really cool sound. There are a couple places on the album where the lead guitar ventures a little closer to like, you know, pentatonic rock type territory, but for the most part it's not what you usually hear and it's refreshing. The production in general is really well crafted, like you feel like the band has a really good sense of filling in the frequencies and having everything stacked together nicely. And overall the production just knows when it should get out of its own way and let Monroe do her thing either on guitar or vocals or both. Thematically, the lyrics on the album, you know, there's quite a few songs about the ends of relationships, uh, but then it also veers off into some more existential sort of topics. But overall, the lyrics have a really strong sense of resolve and empowerment. Uh, like I said, it was really hard to pick one song off this album. It's one of those rare albums where I will happily put it on and play it all the way through with no skips. All right, next up is the song Too Much Beauty in This Beast 
by Strange Eyes. This is actually the title track to her EP, which she just put out. Um, first of all, I mean, what a title, right? That's just an evocative title. That's fantastic. And maybe the song isn't strictly retrowave, but I feel like it's still worth your time if you like the genre. It's a really gorgeous combination of acoustic and electronic elements. Uh, it reminds me a lot of Suzanne Sunfer on like the 10 Love Songs album, or I hear a lot of Tori Amos on here as well. One of my favorite musical moments of the year is the little string fill that happens in between the chorus lines of this song. I don't know what it is about it. It's like this little dun 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 but it's like, I'm excited to hear it every time it comes by and it's just super pretty. The song has gorgeous harmony vocals throughout it uh, and the vocal melody is slightly unusual. It's got this wandering quality with a, a bigger range than you would typically hear. Uh, it has a like a bit of a wild feel to it, which I think fits the song thematically as well as being interesting to listen to. Uh, and the end of the song has a change up. There's this bridge with a vocal melody that builds into a synth solo and then the song just ends. And honestly, you know, it's like, I kind of wish the song were longer because I enjoy it, but it really makes excellent use of the time it has, so I, I can't really complain. And like I said, this is the title track to an EP, so if you like a little bit of art in your pop, I highly recommend checking it out. All right, next up is the song Surrender by Mondman and Anywhere. I really like the vocal performance on this song. It's got an emotional, desperate quality to it. Uh, the vocal production is fantastic. The use of delay and reverb throws to have the vocals swell up in between the phrases. The synth sound design is really satisfying too with a, a fantastic use of filtering and sweeping. Structurally the song is more EDM than pop in that there's one main chorus refrain that repeats with the, the, the instrumentation behind it being really the only thing that changes. But you get to the end of the song and there's this coda section where the vocal takes off and has this whole other melody and it really just kind of comes out of nowhere and it matches the emotionality of the rest of the song and just ties everything together. The song would be pretty fun to listen to without it, but with that coda, it just is on a whole other level. All right, next up is the song It's All Right, which is the title track from an EP by The Less Dead. This song is euphoria in song form. Like seriously, if you need some uplift in your life, if you need a little bit of hope, if you need to believe that things are going to be okay, uh, you might want to ask your doctor about this song. Uh, Less Dead is a master at vocal chops and they're just put to fantastic use in this song. There's the, the, the high punctuated ones at the beginning and I especially like them when, when the song opens up and kicks off, the, the vocal chops are, are formed into this really gorgeous melody. There's this sticky woody percussion sound going throughout that just gives a, a really nice propulsion to it. Uh, there's a sweet guitar lick that comes in later. So you're listening to this track and you're being uplifted and you're on board and, and there's all this awesome stuff going on. And then Less Dead is just like, oh yeah, there's one other thing. Wah-bam! And he starts singing. And the track just elevates yet again. You know, as a producer, it's like, come on, man. That's just not fair. <laughs> you know, and oftentimes when producers sing on their own tracks, it leaves something to be desired. Um, but definitely not here. He's got this great emotive plaintive voice. And when he's singing these affirmations, there's still like this hint of weariness and resignation. And it just like perfectly undercuts the joy of the song. But in a way, it makes everything even more joyful. I'm not, I don't know, like it's the exception that proves the rule or something. I don't know. I'm probably getting a little metaphorically down a rabbit hole here, but suffice it to say that the vocals really serve the song. I highly recommend the whole album too. Uh, like the Lavalette album, it's a mixture of instrumental, vocal, and talking tracks. And so there's kind of something for everybody. It's also very well sequenced. I'm so used to hearing the plaintive song that comes after It's All Right now that it just feels like that's how the package should happen. So I would encourage you to listen to it front to back. All right, next up is In For The Win, song by Thorson and Headband. Uh, this song has a really cool contrast between the verses and the choruses. Uh, it's got this tasteful sax solo in there. You know. Oftentimes in Retrowave you hear saxophone, I get the feeling like it's just supposed to hit a nostalgia button and so everyone just wants the sax to go Bleh! And you know that's cool and everything but what I really appreciate about the sax solo in this one is that it's well woven into the fabric of the track. It uses some of the vocal melody as a basis and it's, it's very melodic and it, it resists the temptation to just go Bleh! But really the song is mostly on here because of its bridge. It's one of the best bridges I've heard in a long time. Uh, it's totally out of left field, it's a, it's a complete field change up, and yet it has the same triumphant mood that matches the rest of the track, it just kind of comes at it from a different direction. It's kind of old school in the sense of what a bridge should be doing. I just love it every time it comes along, and th the whole track is fun, but when that bridge comes along it's just like, yeah, awesome. Next up is the track Big Boy Games by Tarouz. It is so satisfying to encounter art like this, where the artist has such a clear, strong vision for what they're trying to do, and then they go out and they just nail it, right? It's like watching an athlete at the peak of their game. Maybe that's a little hyperbolic, but the point here is that the whole presentation is amazing and the song is great. 
If you check the song out, I highly recommend watching the video. Uh, Tarouz incorporates a lot of his artwork into it that, that reinforces the theme of the song. The song is about ego and betrayal and violence between families, and it calls to mind a whole bunch of stories from classic literature and other media. And it just has a meatier tone and theme than you generally find in pop songs. The vocal delivery here is unique, and it so perfectly matches the character and lyrics. I mean, honestly, I, don't, I just don't think anybody else could sing this song. The dark synth production on the song hits hard, and the arrangement is a gift that just keeps on giving. I love how there is no section in the song where the energy is allowed to stagnate. Um, there's always a new element coming in or breaking down, and it just makes the song feel really alive and a, and a pleasure to listen to. The chorus has so many awesome ear candy elements. There's this rocking guitar part in the left ear. There's these synth arps that come in later. But my favorite is probably the gospel style backing vocals. On the money, right on the money, honey. And then of course the song has one of my favorite things, which is a big switch up bridge. And this bridge is also an amazing slow burn buildup with some fantastic vocal layers that start intertwining and there's this insistent synth arp with the filter opening. It's so much emotion and tension that brings us right back into the, to the refrain of the song. So definitely check the sucker out. Uh, it's a hell of a journey and again, watch the video. Next up is the song Lotus by Hope Called In Sick. Uh, this song basically knows that it has an absolutely gorgeous uplifting chorus melody and it leans into it hard as it should. Uh, there's big washy reverb, uh, maybe too washy in places, but honestly when a song is this pretty I'm not going to nitpick. Uh, there are twinkly, beautiful piano parts going along. I love how the later choruses really push the repeat of the refrain higher into the stratosphere. I like the somewhat mysterious lyrics. I mean, honestly, it could just be that I'm missing a reference, but they're a little different from what you normally hear. I found myself wanting to put this song on as a little pick-me-up over the last few weeks. It's just so pretty. All right, next song is Swamp King by Echo Barrel. Uh, this song is gothic rock slash dark synth just done to perfection. Uh, the Cure style wandering eighth note guitar lines are a highlight for me. The vocals have this moody, slightly disaffected tone to them, which fit the song perfectly. And I like how they're double tracked wide and the guitar and the synth melodies take up the middle. Just an interesting way to present the song. The whole album is fantastic too. If you like this song, you're going to like the whole thing. Next up is the self-titled EP by the duo Violet Island. I discovered this through the YouTube algorithm and just fell in love with it immediately. It's really well-made synth pop with excellent vocals by one half of the duo, Jesse Villa. So I did some digging to try to find some more info about them and discovered that these songs were written for a royalty-free music site. I guess the idea is you subscribe to the site and then you can use these songs royalty-free in your videos or whatever you're making. But rather than solicit music from outside writers like most music libraries, they write and produce their stuff in-house. But then this EP was also released to the usual distributors, which is how I found it. I'll admit when I found this out, I did a little bit of a double take. Like, is it weird to listen to an album that was written for a music library? But these songs are legitimately very good and have some soul to them. So it's not like the, you know, jolly ukulele and whistling junk that you might associate with, <laughs> with stock music. So I'm not going to sweat it. I'm just going to enjoy the well-written songs. And then finally, there's the album 2020 101 by Shannon Curtis. I did a full length review of this album if you want to check it out. But suffice it to say, this is a singer-songwriter synth-pop album that's all about 2020. And I know what you're thinking. If somebody told me, hey, here's a 2020 album, you should check it out, I'd be like, no thank you. I already lived through that. Don't want to live through it again. But this album is not depressing. It's actually really uplifting. It's really positive. Um, it's fantastically crafted. The songwriting is just excellent. The synth-pop production is punchy and clean. The vocal arrangements are probably the highlight of the album. Just fantastic use of all kinds of different vocal parts going on. Yeah, so don't get turned off by the 2020 thing. In fact, if you live through 2020, you might want to check the album out. It's pretty therapeutic. All right, everybody, that's my list. Uh, it was hard to whittle it down. There's a lot of good music out there. If you're intrigued by any of the descriptions, uh, check everything out below. There's lots of good stuff there. And thank you, everyone, for making such amazing music and putting it out there for us to enjoy. So a little shameless self-promotion if you like Retrowave with vocals. I have a collaboration coming out with Flashback 81 in mid-December. I'll have a full album of Retrowave with vocals coming out in 2022, including remastered versions of some of the singles I put out this year. And coming out even sooner is a chill pop album. Not Retrowave, not Synthy, but just gorgeous, pretty songs that you might like. So check them out. Thank you.